We begin with paying attention to two crucial verses from Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. To know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death if perhaps I may attain to the out-resurrection from the dead. As I mentioned briefly in message two, the final message for this little conference, uh, message four for, for now, is on the out resurrection and we'll pay close attention to so many aspects of this because it is very closely related those who are present daily life as believers in Christ and as what might be our future or our situation during the next age, the age of the kingdom. And in message three, we emphasized Paul's longing, his desire, I would even say his determination to know Christ experientially and to know the power of Christ's resurrection. And I read these two verses to point out the connection between knowing the power of Christ's resurrection and attaining to the out-resurrection from the dead. It is of utmost importance that every one of us in a personal way, in our, our own relationship with the Lord, at least every now and then, doesn't have to be a ritual, uh, a, a formal thing, but just to pray to the Lord, Lord, I want to know you not only as life, I want to know you as resurrection life. And Lord, I'd like to learn what Paul was learning and his aspiration, may it be mine, to know the power of your resurrection. We covered this to some extent in the previous message. But I want to emphasize now, this is one of the most important, I would say, turns or advancement in our life with the Lord. And first, I would say, simply aspiring to know Christ, having this yearning, this longing, this desire in us. Lord, I have learned many things about you. Lord, now I want to know you. As a living person, I want to know you as the all-inclusive Christ. And Lord, I want to know the power of your resurrection. And please remember that the knowing here is not objective knowing of doctrines or simply truths 
in a kind of just printed way, but it's experiential knowing. So we want to know Christ through experience of Christ. And we want to know the power of Christ's resurrection through actual experience of the power of Christ's resurrection. And hearing this and receiving this and agreeing with this is, is it's excellent. It's so beneficial. But there's another step. And I've used this illustration frequently. In 2 Samuel 7, when the prophet came to David and spoke on behalf of Jehovah God, there was a wonderful unveiling of what would happen in the future that the seed, the son of David, will be this and that in God's economy. Then David didn't just say, Amen, thank you, I believe this. He sat down before the Lord and prayed to him about what he had just received from him through the prophet. And I admit, and I'm not being phony when it comes to humility, it's just a fact. In certain matters, I've been slow in learning. But I just remember that time when the Lord in my contact with him, and he was just shepherding me and pointed out to me, you receive, you agree, but you need to pray them, pray about it. Pray that what you have just heard and received and what you believe will become real to you, that you will experience this. This is my description of what happened and how that affected me. And so when we learn something from the word through the ministry and we say, amen, we are thankful, we appreciate, but then we need to make the next step. Lord, I want to know you experientially. Lord, I want to know experientially the power of your resurrection. And then one other point, and then we'll go to the outline for message four. We saw in message two about being conformed to Christ's death. That's also in this verse, verse 10. And Christ's redemptive death and Christ's life-releasing death, in other words, the crucified and resurrected Christ, he is the kind of the mold that we are placed in. It's not a thing, it's Christ himself. And that through this, the cross operates in us, dealing with every negative thing, not just judging it, but terminating it. And we all must take the way of the cross sooner or later. But we will all realize, Lord, I'm not able to do this. I, I don't know how to do this. I, I agree. I believe. But in my actual daily situation, 
again and again. I don't know how to apply the cross. I don't know how to be being conformed to your death. And the Lord is actually quite appreciative of this because now finally we're telling him, Lord, I can't do this. I want to, I need to, but, I, but I'm not able to. Then somehow through the word, the Lord will indicate, I know. The only way you can do this is by experiencing the power of my resurrection life. Just contact me. Let me dispense myself into you as my resurrection life. And this will give you the strength, the energy, the ability to apply the cross and to be conformed to my death, which will issue in more resurrection life with its power, and that will enable you to do what by your natural life you cannot do. So this is why it's very important experientially to follow Paul's pattern. Lord, I want to know you. A few verses prior to this, he said he really wanted to know Christ by revelation. And that's how it starts. The veil is lifted and we learn the truth concerning Christ. Now we know him experientially more and more. And the same, I'm repeating deliberately, we need to know the power of Christ's resurrection. Nothing can withstand the power of Christ's resurrection. And so in that hymn we sing from time to time, death cannot hold the resurrection life. So with this as the foundation, uh, based on verse 10, we can focus our attention now on verse 11, which I will read again, and I appreciate Paul's spirit here and Paul's genuine humility here. He said, if perhaps I may attain to the out-resurrection from the dead. Remember, we read these verses in a previous message where Paul said, I haven't arrived, but I'm stretching out to what's ahead. I'm forgetting the things that are behind. By the time he wrote this epistle, he was very mature in the divine life, had received vision upon vision, experiencing Christ, enjoying Christ, being found in Christ, ministering Christ, praying in the name of Christ. But he didn't say, I've arrived, I'm ready. I'm going to attain to the out-resurrection. He had no confidence in himself, no trust in what he knew or what he might have been able to do, at least previously. He said, if perhaps I may. And brothers and sisters, all of us, have this big if, I-F, before us. This hasn't happened very much. 
But I remember one a person sent me an email. He obviously was in the context of the recovery somehow. And he spoke of himself. He said, I am an overcomer. I am. This is what I am. And I couldn't respond and I didn't respond. There's no way to reply to such a thing for someone who is so self-deceived that can say, I'm an overcomer. Paul did not say until the very end of his life that I have finished the course. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. The crown of righteousness is waiting for me. Only at the end can any genuine believer have the assurance that yes, I am rapture ready. Yes, Lord, I will be in the wedding feast. I will be a co-king with you because by your grace and wisdom, you have made me what you are regarding being an overcomer. You are the overcomer. And now you are duplicating yourself in many saints. Well, I have that living hope. I hope you have the same living hope that at the end of the course, we'll be able to say, Lord, we've, we did it. We finished the course. The reward is guaranteed now. The crown is ready. But we need to realize we're, we're far from that. Those who really have been dealt with by the sovereign God in certain ways and have been humbled before him and have humbled themselves under the mighty hand of God, they have no confidence in themselves. They would not say, oh, I just had such a wonderful enjoyment today. But we know tomorrow could be a day of failure. 20 minutes after you said these positive things, there could be another defeat. And I'm just speaking in principle, many of us, this is part of our history. And it's made us more and more dependent on the Lord. We have not yet finished the course. So we learn from Paul to have an if. If. And then perhaps. He didn't say, saints in Philippi, I, the apostle Paul, have attained to the out-resurrection. I'm here in prison. I'm reigning in life. I attain to the out-resurrection. Soon I will be put to death, but I will conquer death. Never, never have even a thought about that. This mature apostle this pattern to all of us could say, perhaps. Or we might say, maybe. If maybe, I may attain to the out-resurrection. And I believe you can join me in saying, brothers and sisters, maybe I will attain to the out-resurrection. If 
perhaps, maybe, I will attain. Please don't think that I think that I have attained. I don't know what the next hour will bring. If I'm still here next week, what will happen? We just know that based upon our knowing Christ more and more experientially, knowing the power of his resurrection more experientially, experiencing the fellowship of his sufferings and being conformed to his death by the power of resurrection. Based on this, now we have this goal set before us, the out-resurrection from the dead. And the Lord covered me to say, this is not some kind of tremendous thing. I'm just sharing something. By the Lord's mercy and grace and determination and shepherding, I can honestly say personally, the out-resurrection is the goal of my present daily Christian life. Lord, by your grace, I'm moving in this direction. I don't want to just be resurrected if I pass away and not be raptured alive. Well, all the believers will be resurrected. Lord, whatever the future may be, I just hope that perhaps I will attain the out-resurrection and overcomer's resurrection. Uh, I'm going to go on to say this. If these words about attain to the out-resurrection from the dead remain just words in the Bible. A week from now, it'll all be gone. What is in my heart is that these verses will be written in our heart. It's just part of our being. It's not that we're thinking about it all the time, but inwardly, we are in a process, as we will see, of experiential resurrection, little by little, day by day. And we pray for it, and we have peace from the God of all peace to accept any arrangement he makes, because it works together for good, because the goal is the out-resurrection. Now we come to the outline itself. One, the result of being conformed to Christ's death is that we may attain to the out-resurrection from the dead. So please notice here, there's the result of being conformed to Christ's death. And please remember, we are able to be conformed to Christ's death only by the power of his resurrection. But if we are experiencing this, it may be little by little. The result will be the feeling that we may attain to the out-resurrection from the dead. We realize, Lord, 
I, I, I might reach this. This might happen. I have a living hope now. This is the issue. This is the result of what I've been learning based upon verse 10. More and more, I just am praying, I want to know you. You're all inclusive. I hardly know you, but I know you some. Lord, I pray I want to know the power of your resurrection. And I'm willing to be in the fellowship of your sufferings for the body and be conformed to your death. And accepting that confirmation because of the power of your resurrection life. And then we realize the goal begins to, it's like the dawn, the sun rising a little bit. There's darkness, but it's dawn. And I realize, Lord, this might really happen to me. I might attain to the out-resurrection. Lord, I'd like to pray about this. And I would ask you, Lord, please give me the experiences I need to attain to this special overcomer's resurrection, the out-resurrection. Point two, to attain to the out-resurrection. No, yeah. To attain to the out-resurrection is to arrive at the out-resurrection. Attain, arrive. But when we say arrive, that means we're on a journey. Those of you, many of you, as parents may remember, when your whole family's in a car and you're going on a trip somewhere, it may take a whole day's drive. And the children are there in the back saying, saying Daddy, are we there yet? Are we there yet? When will we be? Well, it's hard to know what to say. Just say, well, we, we're moving along. It will take a while. But this word, arrive at the out-resurrection, indicates a journey. It indicates a process taking place. And as the verses in 1 Corinthians 9 here and 2 Timothy 4 and Hebrews 12 indicate, we're in a race. We're not competing with one another. But there is a race set before us. And if we triumphantly run the race, we gain the prize. So the thought here is that we don't just sit here and hope, oh, Lord, I hope I will attain to the out-resurrection. I hope that you will say, welcome, come into the wedding feast, this is the out-resurrection. It's not going to be a gift just like that. It's the issue of a process. It's the goal of a journey. It's the prize of a race. And I can't take the time to spend details on this. But to run the race, that really means we are all on a course a journey arranged by the sovereign God, all of us. And everything depends, everything regarding the coming kingdom, that is, depends on whether or not we finish the course. 
That's why Paul said, get at the end, at the end. I have finished the course. He's the one who wrote the verses in 1 Corinthians and 2 Timothy and Hebrews. I have not arrived. I'm running the race. I'm pursuing. Then when he finished, he realized he finished. Just, uh, okay, I can't. Um, I was going to mention a certain illustration that is positive about a brother who had just passed away, but he could tell someone in his family, he said, I'm ready. In other words, he finished his course. Point three, the out-resurrection is the outstanding resurrection, the extra resurrection, which will be a prize to the overcoming saints. I know the expression out-resurrection is really unusual. I would have to consult some expert in Greek who can answer this question. Did Paul kind of invent this word, out-resurrection? But we're thankful that we have the right understanding through the ministry of the age that Paul is talking about an outstanding resurrection. Remember that little illustration I gave of a young person graduating from high school or university. And very good. We're, we're glad you, you graduated. Parents are, are happy. But there are some that were very diligent students. They studied. They prepared for tests. So they got a reward, a kind of special graduation with honors. And sometimes when they announce the person's name, they say, Miss so-and-so graduating with honors. Sometimes they even may say graduating with the highest honors. Well, this illustrates at least a little bit. We're talking about a special kind of resurrection, an extra resurrection. It's a resurrection that immediately brings us to receiving the prize. Paul now knows, as he knew at the very end, I'm going to pass away. I'm going to die. I will be with the Lord in paradise. And I will be resurrected. But when I am resurrected, it will be an extra, honorable resurrection. Because I know the crown of righteousness is waiting for me. I will be there. This is not my hope now. This is what the Lord indicated to me because and when I finished the course. A, all believers who are dead in Christ will participate in the resurrection from the dead at the Lord's coming back. I can say this on behalf of my beloved parents. They both passed away in the year 2002. There's eight months separating my father first and my mother. They were saved. They, they are with the Lord. They will be resurrected. 
But it's up to the Lord whether there'll be any prize. But all the believers will be. That's not a question. It's what kind of resurrection will there be? If we are those that are experiencing the power and the effectiveness of Christ's resurrection, we may become rapture ready. The Lord will make us ready while we're living an ordinary life to be raptured to the throne. Or maybe the Lord's sovereign arrangement is that we finish our course and pass away and we're with the Lord. But there's the inner sense, as it was with Paul, Lord, I finished the course. And now I'm awaiting resurrection with the prize. B, the Lord's overcomers will enjoy an extra outstanding portion of that resurrection. A resurrection in which they will receive the reward of the kingdom. This is what the Apostle Paul sought after. Isn't this same aspiration in your heart right now? Maybe there are some uh, dear brothers and sisters who are hearing a message like this for the first time, or you just decided to participate in the church life within the last year or so, and this may, you know, just be something new that you need to understand and, and experience. But I, I believe many of us, many of us can say we've had this kind of thought and hope. We all know we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And he will be, he will examine our living and our serving. We had these two aspects. Did you grow to maturity? Were you transformed? And were you faithful to do what I com committed to you? And we just long to hear the Lord say, well done, good and faithful slave. The Lord used this word slave. And I'm, I'm thankful. I am his slave. We look at the first verse of the book of Revelation. This is revealed and given to the Lord's slaves. And the Apostle John in his 90s plus was a slave. So I'm just emphasizing the word. Well done. Enter into the joy of your master. Don't you want to hear those words spoken to you? On the personal side here, there's, not, there's no longing in my heart deeper and more precious than this. Instead of him saying, I don't know you, like in Matthew 7, you did not do the Father's will. You did so many things. Depart from me. In other words, you will not be in the kingdom. And so whether or not we receive this prize depends on the resurrection life operating in us. So we hope to enjoy 
in joy. What joy will be? The Lord says, enter into my joy. And, and in a way, I think he's saying my joy will be your joy. He said this in John 15, 11. Now rejoice with me. Come into the wedding feast. Point C, the out-resurrection should be the goal and destination of our Christian life. If all of us remembered only this one point, we have the heart of the message. The out-resurrection should be the goal and destination of our Christian life. Well, some may say uh, sincerely and, and not, not mistakenly, brother, my goal is to be in the kingdom. And my goal is to be in the wedding feast. I say, amen. But the reason this point is so crucial is that if you want to reach the goal of being in the wedding feast and the goal of being a co-king with Christ in the millennial kingdom age. You need the goal. You need the destination of something particular. And that is the out resurrection. Yes, in your heart, there's this hope. There's this yearning that the Lord will say, come into my joy. You're invited to the wedding. You're part of the bride. You will reign with me in the kingdom. But the Lord will, will say this only to those who have had the out-resurrection as the goal and destination of their Christian life. Dear saints, this needs to penetrate us. So it's not just a teaching we now understand. And it's, we have no problem with agreeing with it. But then after two days, it just evaporates because it didn't really enter into our being to realize. And also, it's when we pray after hearing the word as David did, Lord, please in your mercy and grace, please enable the goal and destination of the out-resurrection to be my goal. Lord, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. This is something new to me. So Lord, Lord, by your grace, by your wisdom, by your shepherding, by your training, even by your discipline. Lord, cause the out-resurrection to be the goal of my Christian life, personally. And we do this in the context of the body, but we will all stand before the Lord in a personal way. And he will speak to each one of us in a personal way. We're not being independent here. We're not being individualistic here. It's the personal side. And Paul's a pattern of this. If anyone lived for the body, in and with and through the body, it's the Apostle Paul. He knew this. 
His whole being was given to this. But if there to be the body built up corporately, the saints need to have this kind of experience personally. Now, based upon point C, we can come to section four, which is of utmost importance now. To arrive at the out-resurrection indicates that our entire being is gradually and continually resurrected. And the thought here is that if arriving at this goal, if the out-resurrection is the destination of our Christian life, we have determined this, we have prayed about this. And now we need to see the procedure, the process. I read again for emphasis, to arrive at the out-resurrection indicates that our entire being is gradually and continually resurrected. So this is the process, gradually, continually. A, God first resurrected our deadened spirit. He proceeds to resurrect our soul and our mortal body until our whole being, spirit, soul, and body, is fully resurrected out of our old being by his life and with his life. We know from Romans, Paul said, our body is a body of death a body of sin. I referred to Romans 8, 11 in a previous message. If the spirit of the one who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead through this indwelling spirit will give life to your mortal body. But what we want to emphasize is that our body will be brought into resurrection when the Lord comes. But we have resurrection life enabling us to have the strength and the energy to live a God-man life. But the focus is on our mind, emotion, and will. And so I just ask you again gently, brothers, let's just say from January the 1st, 2022, until today, this is in March now of 2023, to what extent has your mind been gradually resurrected? Your way of thinking, your memory, your imagination, your thoughts. And of course, this applies to sisters as much as brothers. And then I would ask very gently, sisters, during the same period of time, what has been gradually and continually happening in your emotions? This is just the same? After 15 months, do you sense there's a development, there's a newness, 
to something humanly divine now. I not only love my own children, I love the children of all the saints. When I serve in children's meeting, I love them all. And then I just, again, carefully ask all of you, to what extent has your will been brought into the out-resurrection gradually and continually? Let me just, as an illustration, address to uh, brothers and sisters, you know, married in their family. I uh, just like my, my older grandson. I just got a, an email from him not long ago, just saying, Grandpa, I'm 21 now. And I remember days after he was born. But there was what? A gradual and continual process. And now he's a young man. Even legally, a young man when he was 18, legally. And what encourages the parents is the growth, it's the development. Now you're four. You're like this. Now you're seven. Now you're 12. Now you're 17. Now you're 21. You have been developing. Dear saints, this is how life, the divine life, functions. Point B, this is a process in life through which we must pass and a race that we must run until we arrive at the out-resurrection as the prize. So this is a process. So, so I'm asking you again, and the Lord knows my heart, and you may be able also to read my heart. This is my loving concern that can you just testify you have been in and you are in the process of attaining the out-resurrection. You can honestly say in the Lord, as I can by his mercy, by the mercy of God, I can say, I have not arrived I have a way to go, but by his grace, I'm in a process. Day after day, I'm in this process. And even when the Lord set me aside for those months, recovering from an open heart surgery, inwardly, there was much more process. I just rejoice in him, thank him. You honoring this prayer, even this consecration. Lord, this is my goal for your heart's desire to arrive at the out resurrection as a prize. And thank, thank you, Lord, I'm in the process to pass through and that means I'm on the journey. I'm on the race that you have designed for me. Our, our beloved brother Benson Phillips finished his course. Our dear sister in Anaheim, 82 years old and a half, finished her course. But all of us are still here 
None of us can say we finished the course. But I just long that all the saints would eventually be able to say, I finished the course. I've arrived. I will have the out resurrection as a prize. Glory be to God. See, if we are conformed to Christ's death, every part of our being will be gradually resurrected. Thus, the Christian life is a process of resurrection. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Conform to Christ's death. That's why it's so important to pray over and study verse 10. We need to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Be conformed to his death. Because if we are being conformed to Christ's death, and something is happening to every part of our inner being, mind, emotion, and will. I assure you, every part is being gradually resurrected. This may sound strange, but you will have a resurrected mind. Maybe some of you were just born almost the genius capacity or just very intelligent. That's the way you were created. But it's very different when that mental capacity has been brought into resurrection. The same with all of your emotion and your will. And while I'm speaking this, this process is either taking place in you or not. It's not too late for it to start. But only you can make the final decision for this age. Lord, I want to be in this process. Not only day by day, even hour by hour. Thank you, Lord, for a new day, a new beginning. May the process continue today for the glory of God, for the kingdom, for the body of Christ. So every part of our being will be gradually resurrected. You won't, you won't feel it. Christ is making his home in your heart. You don't feel it. You can't measure it. Just like when your children were growing, you don't see it. You don't feel it. But after a period of time, it's evident. D, we can reach this goal only by being conformed to the death of Christ, <clears throat> by living a crucified life. We, we have to face this. this. This statement. We can reach this goal only by being conformed to the death of Christ. By living a crucified life. But we've emphasized we can only be conformed to the death of Christ. We can only live a crucified life by knowing and experiencing the power of Christ's resurrection. We're all the same. But if we don't exercise our spirit and have fellowship with the Lord and pray about this, it won't happen now. And it may be in a, whatever the way will be, it'll happen during the millennium, but not now. So we should pray about this, not just say amen. 
I just would encourage you. I'm not promoting a message I give. I never do that. I never say, oh, I encourage you. Listen to these messages. I can't do that. I will never do that. But the material on this outline is from the Word of God and based upon the ministry of the age. I just would urge you, urge you, pray over some of these points personally. Point E, in the death of Christ, we are processed from the old creation to the new. So one indicator that we're in this process is the newness. And the Lord said in Revelation 21, I make all things new. And uh, the Lord covered me and allow me to say this as a testimony to him and an encouragement to any and all saints, let's just say 60 and over. Physically, you're getting older. Some of you are in your 70s. Some of you are in the 80s. You know how different it is when you are so-called octopus to generian, physically speaking. But I can honestly say, although I'm still in the process this very moment, there is much more newness in my inner being now than any time in the past. I'm much newer now than when I was 35 newer now than when I was 55, newer now than when I was in 75. Only the Lord knows how long I'll be here. Maybe I'll look back and say, oh, oh, when I was 83, huh, I still had a long way to go. I'm still on the process. What's in my heart for you? is that you would be in the process day by day. Point five, the out-resurrection is a resurrection out of the old creation into the new creation. To be in the out-resurrection means to leave everything of the old creation and be brought into God. In the out-resurrection, there was no element of the old creation. Instead, everything is full of the divine element. God is new. The divine element is new. Newness is Christ himself. He is making all things new. Six, for Paul to live was Christ as the out-resurrection. So Paul lived Christ. And now we will see that the out-resurrection is actually Christ himself. Remember, he said in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. So now inwardly he can say, dear one, I am the out-resurrection. Let me be the out-resurrection in process taking place in you. The out-resurrection is actually the dear, precious, excellent person of Christ. The one who, through crucifixion and resurrection, has passed out of the old creation and has entered into God. I just emphasize the first part. The out-resurrection is actually the dear person of Christ. The precious person of Christ. The excellent person of Christ. The out-resurrection is not a thing. It's Christ. Christ. 
living in us to guide us through the process into out-resurrection, which is himself. Point B, the Christ whom we should live is himself the out-resurrection. Lord, please shine in us right now. Lord, lift up the veil. Make this truth so real to us. Christ himself is the out-resurrection. So we don't have two goals. My goal is Christ to know him, experience him, enjoy him. And oh, yeah, uh, my goal, my destiny is the out-resurrection. Now we need to see they are one. The out-resurrection is an aspect of the all-inclusive Christ. And so we can have a simple prayer, Lord, today I want to know you as the out-resurrection. Lord, I pray for my wife or husband. I pray for my children. I pray for the saints, all the dear saints in my local, local church. Be the out-resurrection and the saints today. May today count. May the process advance today. Point seven, in Philippians 3.12, Paul had already obtained the believer's common salvation by the believer's common faith, but he had not obtained the extra portion of resurrection. To obtain that portion, he had to pursue, to run, and to finish the course triumphantly. Again, I emphasize the word pursue. You're active. You run. The Greek word for pursue in Philippians 3.12 is the same word as for persecute. This word also means to press forward, to follow after. In such a way, Paul ran the race to obtain the prize and reach maturity. Before he was saved, he persecuted Christ. After he was saved, he pursued Christ to such an extent that he persecuted Christ, but in a positive way. In other words, I'm not going to let you go, Lord. You are the all-inclusive Christ. I am pursuing you. I am seeking you. I will not let you go. I need you more than ever before. I'm pressing on toward you, Lord. In such a way, Paul ran the race to obtain the prize and reach maturity. He had to run the race. We can't be passive, dear saints. Passivity equals death. We need, be, we need to exercise our spirit. I don't criticize, I don't judge, but it's sad in a church prayer meeting when certain dear saints, most of them are much older saints, when they pray, it's without exercising the spirit. This basic practice we need to exercise. That's part of our process. Before he was saved, he persecuted Christ. After he was saved, he pursued Christ to such an extent that he prosecuted Christ, but in a positive way. I emphasize this again. Now I read the last part, and my portion of this conference is finished. We need to be conformed to Christ's death so that by any means we may attain to the out-resurrection from the dead. This is the only way for the Lord to go on in his recovery. The only way for the Lord to build up his church. The only way to prepare the bride. And the only way to bring the Lord back. 
I have a minute or two remaining. I want to read this again. And please, you have the outline, read it inwardly along with me, all of us in a praying spirit. We need to be conformed to Christ's death so that by any means we may attain to the out-resurrection from the dead. This is the only way for the Lord to go on. <coughs> this is the only way for the Lord to go on in his recovery. <coughs> the only way for the Lord to build up his church. The only way to prepare the bride and the only way to bring the Lord back. Dear saints, this is the only way. Let us all press on in this only way to arrive at the out-resurrection. Resurrection as a prize.